Welcome back to Core CSS Mastery. We're going to talk about styling links. Now there's not a huge difference between styling links and styling text. Everything we can do with text, we can also do to style a HTML anchor tag. However, there are some additional selectors we can use to style an anchor tag based on its current state. And we do this making use of CSS pseudo classes. We saw an example of a pseudo class a little earlier in the series where we were able to change the styling of an element by hovering our cursor over that element. We can do similar things with anchor tags, but there are more pseudo classes we can use than just hover. So on this page, we have four links. Notice the links are blue by default. We haven't turned them blue. So even though we haven't applied any styling to these links yet, we can see that there are some default styles which are associated with certain elements in HTML. And those default styles are applied by the browser itself just to give some really basic styling. But as soon as we start applying our own CSS rules, it's going to overwrite the browser default styling. These anchor tags also have some default styling depending on their state. For example, if I click on one of these links and hold down the mouse button, you can see that so long as my mouse button is held down, this link is actually red rather than blue. Now this is styled with the pseudo class active. So long as my mouse button is held down, the state of that element is said to be active. We'll get back to that shortly. The other thing we can do here is to set our href to a link we've already visited. Now, as an example, we have this link location.html. So I'm going to set this as the href for the first link. We refresh the page. Notice the link turns purple. Why has it turned purple? Because I visited this link before. It just takes to a plain HTML page that says you have visited this link. And the browser has tracked the fact that this link is in our history. And as a result, it styles the link differently just to tell the user you've actually already clicked on this link. You visited it before. That's why we're showing it in a different color. Also, if I hover my cursor over these links, although the link itself doesn't change in terms of styling, notice we get our cursor turned into a pointer. Again, this is a CSS rule we can define for any element, but with an anchor tag, it's included by the browser as part of the default styling. We have an anchor tag, we hover our cursor over it, we get the pointer instead of the default cursor. Finally, if I press the tab key on the page, a little bit like I was navigating through a form. You'll probably be familiar with the idea if you're filling out a form online, you can click to the next form box using your mouse, or you can actually use the tab key to navigate a form. And you can see as I press the tab key, we slowly navigate through these links. And the styling is clearly being changed depending on which link is active. There's now a blue outline around that link. Now, absolutely everything we've looked at can be styled. Sometimes it can be easier to start out with a template. So I'll copy these pseudo classes here, which are associated with anchor tags and paste them into the style tags. So let's start with link. This is just going to style the regular version of a link. So let's set this to color red. Let's see which links get styled. The three links which are not listed as visited get styled, but the visited style still takes precedence. This would be a bit different from if we just defined a styling for a blank anchor tag. If I set a blank anchor tag rule and set color red, we can now see that even the visited link gets styled red. But if we make use of the link pseudo class, it's only going to style normal unaltered anchor tags. It's not interested in those anchor tags that are marked as visited by the browser. So now we can actually style the visited links our own color. It doesn't have to be that purple color. So let's style a visited link orange. We'll see the first link turns orange, but the other links stay red because they're not considered visited. We'll come back to focus towards the end. Let's style hover next. And we already have that default styling where the cursor is turned into a pointer. So let's add some styling for hover and we'll set the color to magenta on the hover. Let's save that, let's refresh our page. So you can see anytime we hover over a link, that link is now styled with hover taking precedent. It's more important than any of the previous rules. 
Now, if we were to take that hover pseudo class and paste it towards the top of the CSS rule set, let's see what happens now. So we have a bit of a problem when we hover over our links, that hover pseudo class no longer takes precedence. So one important takeaway here is that the order of the pseudo classes when styling anchor tags is very important in CSS. And we could get stuck here for quite a while wondering why we've got this rule here. It clearly says an anchor tag when it's hovered over should be turned magenta, but none of them are turning magenta. Now we know what the problem here is, so it's very easy to fix. But if you don't know what the problem is, and this is buried somewhere in a large CSS document, this is an example of one of those things that could be very time consuming to fix. So let's paste that where it should be after focus. We refresh the page. We can now see hover is working as we'd expect. Now let's look at the last pseudo class in the list, which is active. Let's set that to green. So active is when we were holding the mouse button down on a link. So in reality, users only going to see this effect for a very short space of time, since most of us don't go around holding our mouse button down on various anchor tags. At least I don't think that you guys do. I could be wrong here. So that might be a bad assumption. But in most cases, the user is just going to see this for a split second, but it still adds to the overall theme and feel of the site. So let's set that to green effect. Let's set it to lime green. Let's refresh the page. Now, if I click down and hold the mouse button down, you can see the link now turns green. Let's try it on the visited link as well. That actually opened the link because we know that does have a legitimate location whereas these others don't. So even if I try and visit those links, you can see we get file not found. If I refresh the page, those links are not marked as visited. They can't really be in the browser history because they weren't actually links. It led to a fake location. So those are still styled as unvisited links, but whether it's a visited or unvisited link, if we click and hold our mouse button down, we can see that styling turns to the active styling temporarily. So we have one final pseudo class to style, and that is the focus pseudo class. I've left this to the end because it involves something we haven't touched on yet in this course. We saw that when we use the tap key, we were able to cycle through those anchor tags. And as we cycle through, we're assigning them the state in focus. We can style that in focus state using the focus pseudo class. And it's clear there's some sort of default styling going on right now. At first glance, this might look like it's the border being styled. Although it looks like a border, it's not actually a border. This is a similar but different CSS property known as outline. And one of the things we can do is we can set the outline to none so it won't appear. If I cycle through the tab key now, you can't see that I'm cycling through at the moment with the tab key because the stylings are not being changed. That's because the outline has been set to none. It might seem counterintuitive to actually turn off a style. Aren't all styles off by default until we turn them on? While that's mostly true, as we've discussed, there are default styles that the browser uses. And assigning an outline to certain in-focus elements is one of the default styles in the vast majority of browsers. So that's going to apply to links, but it's also going to apply to things like forms and text input in forms. So how does the user know that a certain field is selected on a HTML form? And if they type something on their keyboard, it will go into that form. They know because that form input is surrounded by a CSS outline. The reason why this is relevant is because we could have a site with a certain theme. Let's say we have an orange theme for our site and everything is this nice rich shade of orange, but the form elements have this awkward blue outline. And although it's not a huge problem, it does contrast with the intended theme of the site to some extent. So it's great if we can actually style this as well. So everything on the page ties in with our chosen theme for our site. Now, ironically, the way we style an outline is quite similar to the way we style a border, although there are differences between these two CSS properties. Outline is actually shorthand for three different CSS properties, outline color, outline style, and outline width. 
that gives you a clue in terms of what we can style here. So we could set the color to black. We could set the style to solid and we could set the width to one pixel. So let's save that. Let's refresh our HTML document. Now, when we press the tab key and cycle through our elements, we can see that we have a black solid one pixel outline. Perhaps we prefer a different style. For example, we could change the style to dashed instead of solid. We could set the width to three pixels and we could change the color to cyan. Let's see what that looks like. Now, in most cases, your users are probably not going to head to your site, see a bunch of hyperlinks and start using the tab key. That's usually more normal behavior if our user is using a form. So understanding how to style outlines is very relevant for styling forms. If you didn't style this aspect of links, it's probably not that big of a deal because in most cases, users are just using their mouse or their cursor to navigate these various links. However, the other elements should be styled and the ordering of the elements is relevant. So it's good to try and remember this order. Now, this is the correct order according to the Mozilla web docs. However, I also see hover and focus the other way around. Let's just see if that actually makes any difference to the document. I don't think it will. So we can see our hovers working, our visited and unvisited links are working and our focus is working as well. Active is fine also. The reason why I just changed this round is now we can remember this with the mnemonic Lord Vader hates fluffy animals. So just a small trick you can use there for remembering an acceptable order of these pseudo classes when styling anchor tags. Okay, so key takeaways here, how hyperlinks, how anchor tags behave by default and these five pseudo classes and how they can be used to style anchor tags. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you in the next part of the course.